Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 2 of CH Basics. A commonly asked question in Clone Hero related conversation is, how do you know which buttons to hit? It's no secret that players don't read every individual note, but how do they process patterns so quickly on the fly? That's what this video will aim to teach you. To begin to figure out how to make your own methods, you first have to become versed with method notation. Method notation is a system of numbers and symbols to write out how to perform your methods to other players. The style of notation I'm teaching is button notation, which has 1 to 5 as green to orange, and 0 as an open note if necessary. Numbers inside a parenthesis are the clusters of notes performed by your tapping hand, and numbers outside a parenthesis are performed by the fretting hand. Additionally, numbers in brackets are held until another bracket shows up. Here is what I would consider a simple method. It's my method for the intro of Through the Fire and Flames. As you can see with this method, it uses alt tapping like shown in the previous tutorial. Every tapping input is followed by a fretting input, and the ending of the section starts the same way as the beginning, allowing the method to be tileable. If a space is between two parentheses, that implies a double tap. Same goes for if a space is between two non parentheses, a double fret. A method that takes advantage of this is Toby's method for the ending of the Adohu chart of changes by Mike Orlando. Taking a small snippet of it gets us this. Toby would perform this method as two tap inputs back to back, though it can be done with butterfly tapping, rake tapping, slide tapping, and likely other forms of modern methods as well. This is also a method that starts with a fretting input, which can be tough to get used to. Methods like these are what we like to call reverse methods, as the focus of your input polarity has to be where it isn't normally, the fretting hand. When we start to delve into more complicated methods, you'll start to see the tapping hand, as well as the fretting hand, perform multiple inputs in one motion. A method I would consider simple for this is my breakdown method for Inhumane Forest Trail. As you can see, every set of fretting input is the same here, a yellow-blue-yellow -yellow input. By taking advantage of hammer-on and pull-off mechanics, you can perform a zig input for every fretting input to take care of those. This will be expanded upon in a future video. For the tapping inputs, it's a bit tougher since you have to move your hand around a bit, but it's also just zigzags. Blue-orange-blue, red-yellow-red, red-orange-red, you'll likely have to use the pinky for this part, and ending it off with another red-yellow-red. Do that 16 times in a row and you've hit the full section. You should now likely understand how reading an already created method works, but what about the other side of the coin, creating your own methods? I'll show how that works too. The section I'll be using for this demonstration is Crisis Solo 3 from Crisis City by So Inhumane. This is what I like to call an odd set pattern, meaning if the method you perform uses the least amount of inputs possible while alt tapping, the end of one cycle will cause the next cycle to be in reverse method form. This can be circumvented by double tapping or double fretting, or you can do it alt tapping, which is my style. For the first half of a cycle, we've got this descending wave looking thing. It seems like green can be held for this part, so going into the method we'll start with one in a bracket. If we ignore the greens, we then have three sets of descending inputs, an orange to red, a blue to red, and a yellow to red. I would perform this as a descending quint with my tapping hand, then a descending quad with my fretting, and finish it with a descending trip tapping input. Now our method looks like this. For the second half of the pattern, we run into an issue. If we continue alt tapping, a fretting input has to cover red to orange after being on green, and then still go back to green afterwards. We then have to change our anchored note temporarily to perform an ascending quint, or a quint zig more accurately for this plate community. After that, we go back to green and can do a quad zig input to take care of the next five notes, ending off our full first cycle. We then have this. Also, there are two notes left over. We'll get to that. Now we're into the second cycle, our reverse method cycle. We have to tack on the two notes not handled in the first cycle, meaning our first input definitely has to be a fretting quintzig, temporarily moving the anchor again. Just like last time, we have the descending quad and trip input, though this time your tapping hand performs the quad and fretting hand performs the trip. We don't have to move anchor for the ascending quad bit this time, since four fingers are available to most people on their tapping hand. We can hit that with an ascending quint tap. To conclude it, a fretting quad zig in place of where the tapping quad zig was. And we're back to the beginning of the method. Since this pattern has those extra notes at the end, I'll amend the beginning of the method to make it tileable, and finally we have the full method. Obviously this is a pretty bad example for a new player, you can use this for any section with any difficulty level. Try looking at any section within your skill level and create a method for it. Share the method in the comments, I'd love to see them. There are a few formatting symbols I didn't discuss, which shows modern methods. We use a greater than symbol to show slide tapping, multiple greater than symbols shows multi-finger slide tapping. A tilde shows meme raking, so here's my method for Supernovae Solo F. That's about it, good luck practicing, have a day.